Matt Carr, Director of Integrated Powertrain Sales here for Navistar. All right, so we are safely parked. What I'd like us to do before we take off and around the track, I'd like to uh, demonstrate uh, the uh, precision maneuverability mode. But before that, I want you to go ahead and put your foot on the brake, take off the trailer and parking brake, um, put it into drive, and I just want us to creep up to approximately the, uh, the uh, green tractor there. So it's gonna creep just, just like a car, right? So your creeps forward. And that's standard for the International LT. And then what I would like you to um, feel is what we call precision maneuverability mode. It's typically going to be done in reverse, but you can do it in forward to, to simulate. So go ahead and stop the truck. And then go ahead, we're going to click the turtle button here. And what that does, it's now, again, precision maneuverability mode. It's designed for you know pulling into a fifth wheel, uh, kingpin, so you're not... So it's going to... So as soon as you take your foot off the brake, the truck will not move. And then what you're going to do is gently touch the accelerator button and it will gently move forward or backward. But the goal is to not have any lunging. Yeah. So if you're if you're backing a truck into a dock that you're not slamming the dock, um, makes it really easy uh, for drivers to, to maneuver around. Does that automatically disengage? Or? So it'll disengage at 10 miles an hour or we can click the button and, and shut we'll it just, off. We'll go through that disengage yep. feature here. Yep, so. it'll beep at you here shortly at about 10 miles an hour. There you go. And then on the, yeah, good job, go ahead and move into the center lane for safety so you have a little bit of room on both sides. But in the cluster of the LT, you'll notice, you know, this is the F13 integrated uh, paired with the T14 transmission. This is our integrated powertrain. Uh, again, it's, a, it's an engine, a transmission, and the after treatment system. Uh, this, we're, we're, this truck is specifically, you know, we, with a 215 rear axle ratio. And uh, when we spec a truck with that 215 racks of ratio, we're, we spec it to be direct drive optimized. And what that means is, is we really want the truck to operate in 13th gear. So in theory, you're going out with a full load. We want you to be in, in 13th gear. Now, if you go faster, it will click itself in overdrive gear. We never lock out overdrive, but it, it's one of the secret sauces of our powertrain to deliver some next level fuel economy. So right now you can see you're, you're in 12th gear and you can you can go ahead and go up to 60 miles an hour here on the track. We'll probably slide into direct drive about 55. Oh, there we go. There it is. Yeah. So it'll hold it here. Now again, if you were to go up to 70, it'll probably turn, go into overdrive at about 70. Um, but here at the track, we want you to stay at about 60 or 65, um, but just do what you feel comfortable with. Go ahead and get comfortable with the truck. But you know the biggest difference, you know, with the S13 integrated compared to other powertrains out there, right? It's 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 the engine, the transmission, and the after treatment system. But specifically, it you know, starting with the engine, right? We we do not have an ETR cooler. It was a huge move, um, and and the, the way we can do that, right, is is that engineers made a decision to um, to to let the let the truck uh, create more knocks because when you when you design a powertrain, you have a decision to make: is that you can you can either try to balance the creation of NOx, and that's what an EGR cooler is doing, right? EGR exhaust gas circulation cooler. It's actually pulling about 20% of those exhaust gases out of the engine, cooling it down, and then reintroducing it into the cylinder. That gas is is called an inert gas, which means it doesn't have any oxygen, and that's what an EGR cooler does. It's actually lowering the combustion inside of the combustion chamber. Why does it do that? Because lower temperatures actually create less NOx. But our engineers um, took a different path where we decided, we learned a lot about um, after treatments for the last 15, 20 years. And we decided to make a, because you, to let the engine do what the engine wants to do best, we focused on having a, a simple, efficient combustion process. And that simple, efficient combustion process is uh, we actually took compression up, and our compression on this truck is uh, 23 to 1. To give that a comparison, uh, this S13 integrated is replacing our A26. Our latest generation A26 uh, has 20.5 to 1 compression, and the previous generation to that that was brought to market in 2017 had 18.5 compression. So the reason I highlight that for you, the, the higher compression, you can use less fuel in a more efficient way. Um, and that's, that's again, the path that our engineers decided to take with this, and it's a good path because it allowed us to really simplify the powertrain and deliver this next level of fuel economy savings. So, 
the, again, this is a clean sheet design, clean sheet design post uh, SCR technology, and we were able to remove the EGR cooler, and that allowed us to move away from a variable geometry turbo to a fixed geometry turbo with a traditional wastegate. Um, we do uh, dose, uh, we dose DEF uh, at two different locations. Do we use twice as much DEF as our competitors? No, but do we use more? The answer to that is yes. We use approximately 2% um, more uh, DEF. So, um, so how that works is the, uh, you have combustion in the S13 engine. Uh, the exhaust is now leaving the engine, goes out the turbo, and we hit our, our first dose of diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, right outside the turbo. Why do we do it there? It's because the exhaust is the hottest. We atomize that DEF. So now the exhaust is flowing into the after treatment system and we hit a double layered SCR catalyst followed by an ammonia slip catalyst followed by a diesel particulate filter. And then we have another temperature sensor, another NOx sensor, another DEF doser. We dose it with a little bit more DEF and then it flows through another evaporator tube and then it goes through two parallel SCRs, and then it goes out the exhaust. We have another temperature sensor and another NOx sensor. But what you didn't hear me say is we do not have a diesel oxidation catalyst. We do not have parked regens with this. We do not dose diesel in the after treatment system to have that parked regen, okay? Um, so that's the next level um, of technology on this, and again, the how and the why is, is that our engine, we took it up to 23 to one compression. We do make a higher level of NOx, but we virtually eliminated the production of particulate matter. There's an inverse relationship between temperature and the production of, of, of so, NOx and particulate yeah. matter, right? So if, you, if you're hotter, you make more NOx, if you're, but you also reduce the level of particulate matter, soot, right? And, and that's beneficial because we're actually utilizing, we're actually getting more efficiency. We're getting more thermal efficiency yeah. out of the combustion in the engine. And it, but we had to account for that in our after treatment system to, to bring the NOx down to uh, compliance. Uh, one other, another piece of the secret sauce really is the T14 transmission. We use an electronically actuated clutch. Um, typical uh, automated manuals out there in the market. Pneumatics, right? Yeah, they use pneumatic to change the clutch, right? So, but we have an electronically actuated clutch. And the beauty there is, is with a pneumatic clutch, you typically have to make a decision as a, as a, as a transmission provider in that space is do I want to have a, a smooth slow shift or do I want to have a fast clunky shift? Well, the good thing is, is we, we can do the best, we can do fast and smooth with that electronically actuated clutch. So fast and smooth, in fact, we don't even have a tanker mode. A lot of transmissions have a tanker mode for, for dealing with the slosh to have that slower shift. We don't need to do that with, with the T14 as it sits today. So.